Okay, in this video tutorial, I will show you how you can make a simple game as requested by one of the school teachers. Um, so let's say I move to my EJS. So in this case, I use EJS 5.3. Make sure you take the version that is from the Git lab. Double click on the EJS console and EJS will try to launch. If you have Java installed in the system, it should be able to launch. And this is the console of which you have this workspace. You can leave it alone or specify somewhere outside of your EJS unzip folder so that you can permanently work on it. And as you update the EJS versions by downloading newer versions of it, you can actually keep to the same workspace. So in this uh, particular example, let me go to full screen. Uh, let me talk through some of the thinking behind the design of a sentence scrambler. But before that, let me just uh, compile the simulation to let you see how it should look like. So this simulation has a simple text here. Okay, so it will tell a good design will tell the student what to do okay so let's say you choose a particular level let's say level one and uh, we design it such that we want to get the users to be able to form their own sentence so in this case who and you drag and release it will snap okay once you have finished dragging it you can't take it out who's the one so let's say you get it purposely wrong and there will be a change in color the one and if you were to get it wrong again you can continue to change it but once you get it correct it will snap to grid okay and uh, finally you click on the word the long hair a simple text synthesis will be able to read out the words it currently supports many languages uh, but not Tamil so for Tamil you need to find another way to do it which is like you need to create a series of mp3 files and then you make EJS render the audio file upon an interaction with the user so let's say we do complete this who's the one with the long hair once the complete sentence is done <clears throat> there will be an alert to prompt the user and they, it will read out the correct words, which is what uh, uh, the simulation designers wanted it. And then you go on to question two. And in question two, again, we let's who is the one with a sharp beak? A sharp beak. Who is the one with a sharp beak? Okay, and then this will be question three. Who's... Who's Who's the one with strong legs? Who's the one with the strong legs? Question four. Who's the one with oh who's the one with a long tail? Who is the one with a long tail? So once you complete the level, then a pop-up will appear and then it will ask the user to choose another level. So typically we in easy javascript simulation we allow the user to reset select a new a new level through our combo box so this has proven to be an effective design uh, in our simulation because this packs a lot of um, possibilities within the tiny confine of the handphone okay so you can uh, so with the with the hints then it's a matter of matching the one, twos and the threes to the respective boxes. So I've already done the scripting, the basic <coughs> structure of how it should work. Who is the one with the long hair? Okay. So now, now that we have gotten a flavor of how the simulation looks like, let me explain and run through some of the, the design of how to make this actually work. So uh, T, T is time, uh, DT is... Uh, the increment in time pi is the mathematical formula for pi score is a variable which starts from zero so this is the tab 
that is uh, in the variables in the models or variables you need it here layout you can ignore it for the time being currently it is just a, a good to have because I think in some of the more complicated simulation you may need to detect what whether it is on an app uh, whether it is an iOS or Android platform and these are simple width and height variables for me to put into a simulation in the event that the user suddenly decides that there should be multiple pages and you need to manipulate and, and use certain scripting to make the simulation with many panels then you need this page if not you can ignore it cell is something that i i just uh, copied from another simulation so x minimum x maximum these are all the boundaries these are all the boundaries of the simulation okay so n is the number of uh, cells in this case the teachers say that uh, there can be up to up to five or eight of these things so i need an n to control the dimensions x cell is the x position of the cell uh, this is unused currently y cell is the position of the coordinates in the array so this is a cell uh, each one is has a y position or y cell which is currently set to minus 5 that means it's at the bottom is at the bottom of the simulation okay this is minus 5 in the y position uh, and all these are all uh, self-explanatory this is the cell size in the x direction y direction text is something that i use to determine whether the correctness of the input is correct so i will later on show you how i do it text answer is uh, is an initial set of values that we want the text answer to have then we create another set which is for the colors so this n vector square is for colors so currently i have 11 of them uh, so the color vectors is how i control the change in the color of the cell so these are originally this particular color then if i get it big big then later if big. i if i get Colors. it correct then it will be a different color so i use this to control the color n object is um, similar to n so in this case the objects are the one that are on top these are the one that are, there are the objects the one. Uh, so first time is something that I came up with to ensure that the user can that there's a way to detect whether this is the first time the user have clicked on the element enable position is later on to be used uh, to enable position uh, object interacted is uh, is a number starting from minus one if there is no user interaction uh, text object again is something that we use to control to check for correctness uh, text number show is whether to, to show the number or not these are currently not used i think uh, x position y object y object position these are un clearly simple to understand and similarly all this should be not too difficult this y position text is because i wanted to make the text to be a little bit higher when you activate the hint is slightly higher so here is five here is about six and a half and it also increment by one in the x direction okay so in the game uh, long is not used at the moment there are two rounds currently designed uh, eight options because the teacher said it could have a case where there are eight possible things for you to drag so in this case if you have the level 2 then you have 8 of these to choose from okay so this is what number options answer string array is where you need to the teacher need to change to include uh, different possible questions so currently this is the some of the options have been key in so who's the one with the long hair is actually in one array uh, but in this array it is stored as a as a double array 
okay, of this dimension. Question number is something that I need to have in order to count number of questions being filled. So initialization is where we initially put in all the values uh, to so instead of putting it here uh, as, as an initial value we can also use initialization so to to slash means comment so this is for the cell so excel i will use a, a line space so this is the begin and the end of the line space and then i will use this to determine how many uh, numbers i should space out okay so it is number string array uh, and then I because I did some clever thing at the back so it's number counter subtract one because number counter is at first one so one minus one will be zero so this is the answer string array which in this case is uh, answer string array so it's the first so this will be answer string array uh, zero okay so the whole thing here is the first one then dot length is a way in JavaScript where we determine the number of element inside. So in this case, it should be four because who's the one with the long hair is four element inside this particular array. So the length will be four. Okay. Text is again, uh, is the way that we do it to So the beginning and the end and then what is the number to, to type in. So when I use line space, what is line space? Line space is something that you can just copy from the internet, but I've already copied it. Uh, you don't have to worry about what it actually does. Uh, just it's like in Python and other languages, we use line space and we just put in these three variables and then it will, so this is the start, this is the end, and this is the number of them to space out. So for example, I do line space uh, 1 and this is uh, 5 and then the number of them will be 5. Then you know you, you will space it up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So basically you just need to understand it, how it actually works. For more details, you can go to this URL. And Excel is uh, again the position of the Excel. So, the Excel here in this case is here, 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 here. So one of the ways of which you can understand this more clearly is I, I like to use in the plotting panel, you go to decorations, any of the messages you could use. So let's say I type in something like this. I put an equal, I enter. EJS will automatically add the uh, string for you, which is this and this, and then you just continue with it. Then I, with this technique, I should be able to see what is that string being stored there. So it is uh, cell size is 6.5666. So you don't have to uh, bo bother too much about what it should be, but I have already um, made it such as it spaced out nicely. So we do the same thing for the objects. Uh, X object also has its own line space text object also we will do uh, equal spacing from one to whatever number there is and then the number of them okay and similarly object x okay this one i made it a little bit or uh, minus 0 0.1 to make it a little bit smaller so that if if you can see there's a tiny space here so if you take away the minus one Okay, if you take with the minus one. So one thing good about uh, programming is you can just change and you can see the effect. So in this case, the spacing will be completely very tight, okay, which is not very nice to see. So I actually, so I'm going to control Z to add back the 0 0.1. And then now you can see that it has this tiny spacing, which gives the sim a little bit uh, clarity, as in these are all distinct blocks. So that's what the 0 0.1 is doing. Shuffle is because if you don't have shuffle, if you don't have shuffle, then there is no randomness. It, it always is one, it's always is one, two, three, four. Okay, if you go to the hint, you see this one, two, three, four. 
So it doesn't create any challenge for the user or the student in this case. So then because the answer will be just clearly just dragging the it down, or so which is not challenging. With. So we found that there's actually a, a JavaScript function which is called shuffle. Again, you don't have to worry about how to program the shuffle. Somebody has already done it. We just need to copy this into the custom tab and create a new tab so that it's easy to find it. And then you just, to use it, you just shuffle uh, something. So it already has many coordinates. So you just have to shuffle. So in this case, I want to shuffle the X object. So previously X object uh, could be, let's say minus 10 and then some other coordinate. So it will shuffle X position, X object. And then uh, you, you just a single line, then you achieve the uh, appearance of uh, randomness. Because it, it's like it's like playing with that of cards, it will shuffle this and then put it back. Okay. Then this object y equal to five because I need to uh, re I need to put it back into the particular height. So this height is uh, because when the user drag this, okay. Then if you were to finish the game, the one with if you were to finish the game, the long hair, I need to put it back. So that's why I force the who's the one with the long hair y object back to five. But this is done uh, via a simple one-liner. Evolution is what the simulation does. In this case, uh, it's just t and delta t. There's nothing in the evolution, so you don't have to think too hard. There's nothing in the fixed relation, so it's just in the custom. So in the custom, we have some basic uh, function like full screen. So again, to, to see what is the effect of this, I have put it inside the plotting panel. And on double click, on double click of the plotting panel, you will be able to see the the effect of a full screen. So again, these are easily found functions on the internet. You just have to Google full screen JavaScript, use a full screen JavaScript function, and you can copy something like this. Or you can just take my code, and then it will work nicely as well. This is a special script uh, called change orientation to allow it to work on every device ios uh, android as an app so you don't have to worry about it uh, you just need to know to change this k value so if you want the simulation to to be always uh, 90 percent so you just change the k uh, to 0 0.9 if you want let's say a slightly smaller simulation then you put 0 0.8 then correspondingly as you generate the simulation you can see that now the, the plotting panel is now a little bit higher uh, from here to here is 80% of this whole screen of the whole height so I'm going to change it back to 9 so K is the only thing you need to change Speech is a function which, uh, again, because uh, I do development for apps, so this is the code for apps. This is the code for on the web browser. So the function we are using is called speech synthesis utterance, then followed by whatever words you put inside here, then it will speak the words. Because this is in English, so the rest you can just comment out, and then the, the way to make it speak is just Windows dot speech synthesis dot speak the message of which the message in this case is new speech utterance uh, and then the word inside here so you can make this work by putting it here let's say i have put it inside the text so on press it will speech the words uh, text object display and then the whichever object that was being interacted which is the variable that I call object interacted so it will speak the words over there so when you're doing this you have to make sure that this is uh, something that you can variable call it a variable and then make sure that this is enable no move because you do not may not want the student to move it accidentally Sensitivity, if, if this is a, a number, that means it's 50 pixel uh, height and width. 
or which then this is the hot zone for which this on press will work the text to show is over here and the font will be uh, 3 uh, w uh, vw so it's a it's a standard css code for changing the number of uh, three percent of the width of the screen so that each character will be three percent okay so have i covered everything okay so in this simulation you have a a standard way of looking at it so there's a con this there's a full screen okay which in this case this is 100 percent then double click and then you can see there's a particular border which we don't have to worry about it so in this case this is an additional code which is not necessary but it's there because of the template i was using now double click on this one you can see that this is drag the following words and then so it's over here with this particular font so it appears here at the top so it's uh, right here at the top okay combo box combo box the options is level one level two and the and then followed by a space and then followed by hint so you can see that this has the special space here and then how do you make sure that this combo box understand what uh, you want it to do so on change of the option okay again we have this series of codes over here uh, you can copy it uh, so this this is to declare uh, some initial values of the option so if the option because this is the the special code call underscore view the combo box name then get the property which is selected options and if the option you so you, what you need to do is just copy this and then change this uh, correspondingly option equal to level one level two depending on what so in this particular case i made it level one to be simpler so n if you remember previously n was the number of elements in the cell then this is the number of elements in the object which is the, the things that are on top that can you can drag and the answer string array is the one that changed so as a teacher uh, you only need to come here and change the the words here so if you want to change who's keeping the the quotation because this is the standard way to declare strings in javascript and then the square bracket is the standard way to call, annotate or to tell that this is one particular array so this will be array zero array one okay so it will fit in uh, until array uh, four i think this is every four one zero one two three four yeah four of them uh, zero to four so there's five of them and then followed by this command which is to initialize so it will so whatever quotes i have here in the initialization it will run using this command okay i i need this because i need to bring the simulation back to its initial state which is this one okay i mean put it back to its original positions and if the user were to choose uh, option uh, level two then again this will be slightly more complex by increasing the number of cells number of objects and then this will now be more complicated so now this is actually cut up into eight pieces one two three four five six seven eight and then uh, similarly one two three four five six seven eight so typically there are eight, eight pieces okay they initialize so it's the same level one level two so as a teacher you could possibly come here and change the you can you can possibly come here and add <coughs> let's say you just add uh, option level three and then you know, make it do something spectacular so let's say seven seven change the strings here so maybe say in this particular example i have lesser one uh, question mark and then initialize and then come here and add your own uh, level three okay and then when you compile And this should have now the new level three because of this combo box here, the level three here, this text here, okay. And to make sure that you understand what to do, so you notice that this has now one, two, three, four, five, seven things. 
because of the way we scripted here on change of the combo box if it is option is equal to level 3 then it will have 7 things 7 cells and 7 objects or which the answer string array is this and then it initialize because I need to put it back into uh, the correct positions on the screen so did I miss anything uh, okay so uh, okay speech okay I was talking about so this is the okay we talk about this okay reset function is a is a function I created to make sure that I can uh, pass these values into the text object display because I need a way to display it on the screen and make EJS speak out the words then I'll increment the question counter by one once the reset question is done the feedback will be then question plus the question counter number one uh, I mean question counter so it increased by one so initially this is one one plus one will be two so then eventually the feedback text will be question two which you can see on the combo box the one who's the, the long one? hair the long hair the long hair who's the one with the long hair so notice the, who's the one with the long oh, hair this one. Uh, this one this combo box so this combo box will appear uh, because of the EJS interface box panel show dialog feedback and uh, this is the way to pass this particular uh, value inside here I'll reset the score to zero because I want to have a mechanism to score and, and keep keep EGS running correctly so score reset to zero initialize because I need to move everything back to this original position and then plus the shuffling this is a special code that I need in order to initialize all the colors the first time back to true and you know and then enable all so that it can all can move and then this is just to be safe I move the object interacted to be negative one so that uh, it is reset so I'm trying to initialize and reset things back okay now coming back to this combo box uh, there's a play button uh, I think the play button is not used so you want to hide anything you can just come to the CSS command and this is called display none uh, step is again similarly not shown uh, reset is a simple button which we need uh, so the reset button is in this case doing something uh, this is a, a testing which doesn't work because currently uh, Tamil is not supported so I need to have a script I need to add back the reset so that this will allow the user to reset the simulation to its default oh which is here okay on press okay so I have it already okay so I can remove one of it because on click okay so this is doing it already now this is the panel at the bottom which is the plotting panel so the plotting panel has certain characteristics like the the v, um, x minimum x maximum so it will be minus 10 plus some object width so that you can see that it's always uh, smack right next to the maximum and it's very nice the top and bottom are minus 10 and 10 currently this is uh, currently set to true enable because I need to allow the user to drag a sharp bake. Okay, so this is set to true. This one don't have to worry. I think the rest are quite self-explanatory. This is where we usually put a debugging. The the top left message is you normally where we put certain for me is is where I put all the stuff that I want to debug. Axis in this case you notice as a fixed stick and all that uh, you can leave it alone for the time being Now this X this cell here. Oh time is running out uh, So you can see that this X cells has a certain number of elements Which is number string array question counter minus one dot length so that this is a dynamically uh, Set number of elements to show so this is trying to force EGSS to know how many elements to display rather than always displaying eight or, or five but it is clever enough to detect it and then if there's only four if the teachers decide that there can only be four elements then this will only show four so that there will be no chance for EGS to display the fifth element if I were to use n equal to five let's say 
These are all the respective positions, the size, the, the shape of it, and this is the color. Okay, so the rest I assume, I'm just going to go through uh, one last one. So this is the, again, the same thing, but this is now with the text. So text, sometimes we put this percentage sign because we want to force EJS to uh, treat this as a, as a variable. Okay, so minus seven and then X position. So you notice that this should be at the bottom of the simulation, which is here. Uh, these objects are the one that's on top. So uh, this is where it gets interesting. We need to find a clever way to allow uh, the user to, to click and then plus at the same time, we want to be able to check uh, the correctness. So this is the, this is the script for, for snapping. So I will detect, I will run through a series of loops and then I will detect if this is true as well as this is true. And if it is true, if it means that it is close enough, then I will force the object to snap to the position of the cell. So th this is the illusion. This is the illusion of the snapping. Oh, snapping to the wrong one. Okay. Then I have another if statement, which I will check for correctness. I will check if this and these are the same. This is the answer key, right? It's, so this is easier. So I'm matching numbers to numbers. So one... If this is one and this is one, then it will be true. Then as at the same time, I want to check whether this is the first time. If it's also true, then the feedback given will be true, correct. And then the color will change. Score will increment by one. Uh, first time will now change to false because I'm trying to check only one time. So I'll turn it to false so it will not go back again. And this is the code to make sure that EJS will not allow the user to drag it anymore. Okay. So then I will do something again. Uh, else I will do certain color change. I'll ask the user to, to try again. Uh, then if this is indeed, if this answer string array dot length is equal to the score, that means it has run out all the eight. That means if let's say there are how many? One, two, three, four, five of them. It has run out of five of them. It is equal to score. Remember my score was increasing. Uh, from 0 to 1 and then eventually when it reaches the same number as this then I will force the let me see this I will assign this inside here for 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 speech this is a command for joining I'm joining with a space so that when they speak it, it speaks uh, like proper English in, in a continuous way this alert I don't think it's necessary. Uh, I can comment it out, I think. Okay. Then after that, it resets the question. So I think the rest... Uh, so this is if the question counter is equal to the length, then I will show the complete and then ask the user to, to move on to the next level. Okay. So this is uh, what EJS can do. The rest, I think should be possible to now I'm giving you a very short and quick crash course I think that should be allow you to make certain modification to each to the current simulation which is available on the link below thank you